Hello and welcome to this managerial accounting video where we're going to prepare a cash budget. Here we have the information about the cash budget which you should have on your handout. Alright, so let's, let's start over here um, with the words and try to remember some of the things that we're going to be looking for when we're reading through this data. Alright, so first of all we're going to put a heading like we do for every accounting um, schedule that we prepare. The name of the company, Donaldo's Bicycles, and the name of the statement, cash budget, and then the year for the upcoming year. Okay. Alright, so remember that we're going to start with our beginning cash balance. And the beginning cash balance for any company for the beginning of the year is going to be their ending cash balance from the previous year. All right. And so let's look at what they tell us here about our beginning cash balance. Our beginning cash balance is 30,000. I'm going to highlight that so we remember that we looked at it. Okay. So let's put 33,000 in as our beginning cash balance. All right. Then what we want is our cash receipts. All right. Now, sometimes you're going to have a cash receipt schedule if you don't if you have a situation where you have accounts receivable. In this particular case, they tell us most of the sales are for cash and bad debts are negligible and can be ignored. So, in this case, our sales will be equal to our cash receipts for each quarter. Okay, so we can put these numbers in. I'm just going to set this equal because that will save us having to type all of those. All right. Okay, so our beginning cash balance plus our cash receipts from sales gives us cash available. So that's all of the cash that we have available during any given quarter to spend. Sometimes we call this cash available to spend. Let's put that. Okay, so cash available to spend is equal to our beginning balance plus our cash receipts from our sales. Now, our beginning balance from our second, third, and fourth quarters, we're not going to know until we get the ending balance from the prior quarter. So we're going to leave those alone for now. Okay, we can put in our year total here. We're going to add up our sales for the whole year and that'll give us $2,002,000. All right, the next thing we're going to look for are our cash disbursements. All right, so the main idea here is your beginning cash balance, think of your own money. Your beginning cash balance, add in what you're getting, the money that's coming in, and then we're going to take out all of the cash that's being spent. Okay, so we're going to say less cash disbursements. And that's a fancy way of saying cash payments. So our cash disbursements, let's look and see what kinds of disbursements we have. I'm going to highlight this so we remember that we took care of that already. All right, so expenses. It tells us sales commissions are paid at a rate of 3% in the quarter of sale. All right, so let's put in sales commissions. And those are going to be equal to 3% of our sales. Okay. And we'll carry that across and we'll have 3% of our sales for each of the quarters and for the total. So those are our sales commissions. Okay, next I'm going to highlight that again so we remember that we took care of it. Cost of goods sold is 60% of sales. Alright, so cost of goods sold, we'll do the same thing, set up a formula. I'm going to make this equal to 60% times our sales. Okay, so that's our cost of goods sold expenses for the year. Again, we'll highlight that so we remember that we took care of it. All right, next it tells us operating expenses are $165,000 each quarter, including $15,000 in depreciation. All right, so the thing we're interested in here is how much cash we're spending. And remember that depreciation is a non-cash expense. Right? Depreciation is allocating the cost of an asset that has already been bought. 
So we're going to take the 15,000 out of the 165,000 and our cash operating expenses each quarter will be 150,000. And that's going to be the same for every quarter. Okay. We'll add up the four quarters. And then we're going to highlight that so that we know we're done with that. All right, next thing they tell us, the company plans to pay $10,000 dividends each quarter. Okay, so let's put our dividends. 10,000 I'm just going to drag down the sum here so we're going to add up those four quarters of dividends and then we're going to highlight that okay equipment will be purchased in the second quarter for 50,000 and in the fourth quarter for a hundred thousand so equipment purchases this is a little different. We're not going to have it in every quarter. So here we have zero, right? In the second quarter, we have 50,000. The third quarter, we have zero. And then the fourth quarter, we have 100,000. Again, we'll drag down our sum. So we have the total of 150,000. I like that. Okay. Now they tell us there's a minimum cash balance of 25000 and the company has a line of credit that allows it to borrow at the beginning of a quarter and repay at the end of any quarter. The interest rate is 2% per quarter. All right, so now all we have to do is do our adding and subtracting and figure out what kinds of um, borrowing we need here. All right, so after equipment purchases, we're going to call this total disbursements. So let's add up all of our disbursements for each quarter. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to take a look and see whether we have any money available or whether we need to borrow money. So here what we have is our next line is going to be called cash excess or deficiency. And the deficiency is negative. So in other words, if we have a negative number, then it's going to be um, a deficiency. And if we have extra money, then it's going to be excess. So let's just highlight these cells. We're going to take our cash available to spend and subtract our total disbursements. And that will give us our excess or deficiency. So this is equal to what cash we have available minus the total of our disbursements. And it looks like here we have a deficiency of 34,500. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to put in our minimum cash balance, which is 25,000. And that's the same for every quarter. Okay. Actually, I can put it over there too. All right, that's going to give us cash, um, either a cash excess or cash that's needed. All right, now in this case, this is what happens. We have a minus 34,500 and we need at least $25,000. So that means in order to get up to the 25,000, we're going to have to borrow 59,5. So we're going to say minus 59. Five. That's how much is needed. Okay. 59,500. Oops. Minus 59,5. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just take these numbers here and I'm going to make them a different color. And you'll see why later, because we don't want to get confused and add those in when we don't need them. All right, so now we have our excess deficiency. We know that we're going to need to borrow 59500 So at the bottom, we have our financing, short-term financing. And our financing consists of borrowing, repayments, 
and interest. And when we're all done with that, we're going to get our ending cash balance. Okay, so remember what we said. We're going to need $59,500. So we're going to borrow $59,500. That's a positive because that's money coming into the company. All right, we're not going to pay anything, repay anything, or pay any interest because we don't have any money. So our ending cash balance is going to be our excess or deficiency plus the borrowing. All right, that's why I, I wanted that to be blue so that we skip over those. We don't want to get those confused when we're adding and subtracting. So our ending cash balance here is going to be 25000 All right, and again, that's equal to the minus 34.5 plus the 59.5. Okay, so that's our ending cash balance for the first quarter. And remember what we said, that goes up to our beginning cash balance for the second quarter. All right, so now our, our um, cash available to spend here is going to be 925. Then we're going to take our cash available to spend minus our disbursements. So we take the 925 minus 777. So you can see this quarter we're going to have some money. And if you think about a bicycle shop, a bicycle shop, the first quarter is January, February, March. It's kind of cold um, if you're in the Northeast like we are. Um, April, May, June, very busy. That's the second quarter. That's going to be their busiest time of the year. So luckily they're generating some money. Okay, so we have 148000 we need a minimum of 25000 so that means we have 123000 that we can use to pay back our loan. All right, we want to pay it back as soon as possible because we're, we're incurring interest costs. All right, so now we're going to pay back our 59500 That's a negative number. And we're also going to pay back interest. All right, so our interest is equal to 2% per quarter times the amount we borrowed times two because we borrowed for two quarters okay so two percent per quarter times fifty nine thousand five hundred times two we get twenty three eighty all right so now our ending cash balance is going to be equal to the 148 um, and then we're actually going to add this because we're going to subtract that and then minus our interest so we paid the interest let me make that okay let me let me fix this I want this to be I want to make sure that we understand that this is a minus minus okay all right so now we'll just add up the 148 and basically what we're doing is subtracting the 59.5 and subtracting the 2380 so we get 86 120 okay so our third quarter we're going to start with 86 120 we'll drag this across so now we have 736 120 our excess or deficiency remember is equal to Let's highlight these so we remember the things that we are subtracting, All right? So we're going to subtract 736,120 minus 569,500. So we see we're going to have a little money again this quarter. We're not going to have to borrow, okay? So we have plenty of money. We have excess, the 166 over the 25. We have $141,000 extra. We don't need to borrow, we don't need to repay. So our ending cash balance is actually going to be equal to our excess. Okay, so now our fourth quarter is going to be our beginning balance will be equal to our ending balance from our third quarter. Drag our formula over. So our cash available to spend now is 566,620. Drag this across because we're going to take our 566, 620, subtract 512, and we have 54, 620 left. And we still have a little bit of excess when we get to the end of the year. So we're in a good shape again. So we have 54, 620. Our minimum is 25,000. We don't have to borrow any money. 
Our ending cash balance for the year is 54,620. All right, so now we're all set except for our year totals. And remember, sometimes those are a little tricky. So our beginning cash balance for the year was all the way back here, 33,000. All right, we're going to add these two together to get our cash available to spend. So that's going to give us 2233 our total disbursements are 2176 again we're going to subtract so we're taking the 2233 minus the 2176 and that's giving us 57,000 all right so we have a little bit extra at the end of the year for, we have 32,000 for the year all right so we're going to carry these over our total borrowing for the year was 59,500 our repayments were 59,500 and our interest was 2380. So our final ending balance is going to be equal to whoops, our 57,000 plus 59,5 minus the 59,5 and minus the 2380. Oops, I did that wrong. Okay, let's do that again. Um, this is going to be equal to 57,000 I'm just going to skip these two because they're going to negate each other plus the 2380 so 54,620 and that agrees with our ending cash balance okay so that's the end of our cash budget um, it's kind of a little bit long of a long process and everyone's a little bit different but I hope you find this helpful in your studies